Merry Christmas, Susan. For Dad's 50th, you had a takeaway, didn't you? Colin the Caterpillar. I never even heard that before. I just thought it was called Caterpillar Cake. Okay. Have a go. Slapped up in one round by a YouTuber. My favourite food is cheeseburger. What if the girl that thinks I'm the dad isn't the mum? <laughs> With a frozen pen on a ripped out bit of paper, <laughs> fill it dead. This is like a John Lewis ad bit, isn't it? Yeah. Can we get two more rounds, please? Because of the time. Look at the time. Hello and welcome to the In Brother Words channel and it's time for another monthly <laughs> review and today we're looking back on the month of April. We are planning to do other videos other than these reviews and we did actually have a really good sort of funny video that came out mid-month. Um, it was out for all of about 30 minutes and then uh, we got stung by YouTube's copyright rules. Um, so yeah, we put a lot of effort in, made a good little like 10 minute video and we can't show you. So take our word for it. It was really good. Well, it was probably really the best good. video I've ever seen, really. Um, so just take my word for it. Yeah. Okay, so first news story of April then. Uh, very sad news, but we did say on the last, on the March review, and it was well pointed out by our friend Ben Ward in the comments, um, that we did mention that Prince Philip looked like he was on his last legs. I reckon he's been dead for the last 15 years. You look at the photos of him, he's gone. He looks like a taxidermy. <laughs> Prince Philip. The best is when they say, oh, he's out of hospital, alive and well, and look at the phone. Really? Well. <laughs> yeah. Alive and fine well. <laughs> yeah, he looked dead, didn't he? Yeah. And, uh, didn't age well. <laughs> didn't age well, because on the 9th of April, um, aged 99, Prince Philip died. Um, so, got a few little facts here. He met the Queen when she was 13 and he was 19. Yeah. Um, so, a little bit noncy. Something he's obviously... Um, Runs carried, in the family. Yeah, carried down on to his sons. Mm. Um, third, co their third cousins on one side and second cousins on the other. Um, Queen Victoria is both of their great great grandmother, and that is facts. <laughs> um, one probably, if you're looking at like his life achievements, one good thing he did do, um, the Duke of Edinburgh Award. So if any of you out there have ever. Um, you know, wiped an old man's ass, volunteering at an old people's home, or gone on a long-ish walk around Snowden, then uh, I'm sure you really felt this one. Mm. It gives you a, a, an idea of the um, behind the scenes of this podcast. Robbie's got a page of facts about <laughs> Prince Philip, and I've got with a, that I've written with a frozen <laughs> pen on a ripped out bit of paper, <laughs> Philip dead. <laughs> um, um, it's interesting that they're, that both of their great-great-grandmothers is Queen Victoria, isn't it? No. Okay. I said in the last podcast how much I love the Queen, um, and I was pretty just upset to see the Queen sad, really. Yeah. You know, sitting on her own at the at funeral. the funeral, yeah, that was sad. Um, yeah. It was quite cool how, like, in the funeral... Firstly, I was glad that they kept to the COVID rules, mm -hmm. which, you know, obviously they were sort of going to, but they could have not, couldn't they? And that would have been like, yeah, you know, it's good there's no rules different for them. Mm -hmm. um, I liked how, apparently, I didn't watch it, but there was elements to the funeral that weren't let's say traditional and that he'd actually asked for so he didn't have a special car or something that his mm -hmm. coffin was in yeah, like yeah. That. um and yeah that, that photo of the queen sat on her own regardless of you know if she's the queen or not then she's just an old woman who's yeah. been married to somebody for 73 years and they've died that's really sad. sad yeah um so yeah what um, a woman i'll say it again what a woman love the queen yeah i didn't like all this whole rhetoric around oh you know he was Born on his born on a table and look at where he got. Yeah, he was born on a table, but he's like, he was, he was the descendant of like two royal families. Yeah. He wasn't like, a, do you know what I mean? It yeah. wasn't like, you know, me used to live on Dallas Street in Burton. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And like me conceived going, a new old labour club, <laughs> born in Burton. <laughs> it's not like now that. look at me, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that, is it? Do you know what I mean? No. Um, yeah, sad time. Sad for the Queen. Um, nice to see Harry and William together. Mm. Um, None of the kids there. Probably didn't trust Andrew not to fuck them. <laughs> so probably the biggest news then, the entire month, um, Colin v. Cuthbert. There was a lot in this story that I didn't realise, right? So firstly, Colin the Caterpillar, I never even heard that before. I just thought it was called Caterpillar Cake. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So like, he's coming out yeah. saying, I'm the original one. Well, I did as well. Yeah, like... Because yeah. me and Robbie have probably had like the arse end of... Um, confectionery and we've had like the knockoff version yeah we've probably had Keith the Caterpillar from Quicksand <laughs> <laughs> yeah. instead of candles you put fags in the, in the back yeah well I can guarantee you now I've certainly never ever eaten an M&S cat Caterpillar cake 
Well, before we get into the nitty gritty, it's about time we've had a bloody guest on this podcast and we've got someone in who should know quite a lot about this. Yeah. <laughs> Colin! Here he is then. So I've been to MS today. Obviously, I always go to MS, obviously. I do all my shopping there. <laughs> um, gone in and I've bought a Colin. Now, for, let's just one. go, just channeling our, uh, my inner BVM now. Mm-hmm. Right, folks! <laughs> Look at that caterpillar. Um, I think it looks good value for money for seven quid. You yeah. get a lot there. It serves ten. Um, two or, less, two less than Cuthbert, or one twenty nineteen <laughs> Tommy, whatever you uh, choose. You reckon you can see one of them off? And all of it? Um, now, no. <laughs> in his um, heyday, in my heyday, in his prime. I'd have put it in a baguette and put a bag of grated cheese on it. <laughs> yeah. um, let's get him out. Then. Yeah. So we're gonna. Um, have a go. Oh, he's got my arse end. Oh, look at his arse. Yeah. Well, look at oh. that. <laughs> look at the bumper on him. <laughs> uh, already, um, you can see the quality, in my mm. opinion. So, if your parents didn't love you either, and you've had a knockoff one like me and Robbie, it didn't come like this, did it? No. Did it even have legs? No. It was just Why a, has it it was got a, legs? It was a big Yule log. Why has it got legs? Caterpillars have got legs. First of all, why don't you just give us a bit of background, Rob, on yeah, uh, why Colin's the in the news. Yeah, I'll um, like this. How does that serve 10? Just looking at that. that that's how the, How's that 10? Anyway, uh, so the the actual story then. So M&S, the makers of this official legit, the only legit one apparently, uh, the makers of Colin have um, filed a legal complaint against Aldi, um, who have Cuthbert the Caterpillar. Um and the issue is that this is the Colin the Caterpillar from M&S, and since 1990, he is the OG. He's, he's the real, true Donny of the Caterpillar cake world, apparently. Um, and some of you are thinking, well, why Aldi? Because as far as I'm concerned, every supermarket does a Caterpillar cake, and mm-hmm. you're right. So you've got Curly at Tesco, right. uh, Clyde at Asda, mm-hmm. Cecil at Waitrose, and then Morrison's have sort of deviated from the old C, you know, alliteration to Morris... From Morrison's, which is crap, isn't it? Uh, and then even more so, Wiggles from Sainsbury's, <laughs> which is just shit. Yeah. It? Um, so what they what they're claiming is that Cuthbert the Caterpillar besmirches the name of Colin, apparently. And what it is is so this was seven quid, right? Mm-hmm. Audi one is four ninety nine. Yeah. So it's sig- it's significantly cheaper, really. When you think about it from a percentage point of view. Yeah. And their claim is that it it miss it's close enough to the real Colin that somebody eating it and not knowing which one it is could mistake it. easily conceivably think it's the, think it is the same one and therefore that's a violation of the copyright basically because they have trademarks on the name Colin the packaging yeah um, and what they have to do is prove um, that there's a, enough of a similarity and prove that, that it's similar enough that it could co- cause confusion and the interesting thing is I thought that all the caterpillars are the same, but really they don't. Like when you actually look at it, no. and I have to say that Cuthbert looks a lot more like Colin than the rest of them do. Like some of yeah. them have hundreds of thousands on, some of them don't have a white face. Yeah. Like Cuthbert is almost exactly like this. Colin's but, got, this is quality. Like obviously yeah. you can't see close up here, but his white chocolate shoes are proper mm. like it's got proper detail on them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going, to, and I mean, there's been some absolutely fantastic like memes back and forth of the social media teams for very uh, good. It's been outstanding. Um, sort of shots of Cuthbert in court, um, like a sketch artist court sketch and artist. They must have sold loads. Like, oh yeah, it's mu- the I've gone in unreal. today and literally <laughs> stood in the queue yeah. with just holding a Colin. Yeah. yeah. Um, and look, yeah, we've been drawn in, haven't we? Right, let's just see what he thinks. All right. What do you think, Colin? Serve me with cream or hot piping custard. I think Cuthbert is a little fucking bastard. And you can't say fairer than that, can you? No. So I think it's only right, uh, seeing as we've been dragged up, not brought up and never had one. Should we try a little bit? Yeah. Do you see if Maisie wants some? Yeah. Maisie! I'm going to get a bit of the outer shell and the sponge. I think that's what it's all about. Yeah, same. Oh, do you want a bit, a bit Maisie? Really? Or are you picking it up? <laughs> Ready? Go. Which one do you? You get what you pay for, Dot. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. Jack and Lizzie. Good. <laughs> Should we have this last bit? I could probably only eat about four. <laughs> what, four ones? Yeah. 
Mm. <laughs> Just try a bit of this white chocolate foot. Mm. It's not fair otherwise, is it? No, it's not. Oh, that's really good. It's like a milky bar on it. Good. Mm. Colin's a bit of good, isn't it? Mm. What, what, what's your opinion on the Colin the Caterpillar story? Do you know about it? No, not really. So, well, sort of. Tell us, <laughs> tell us roughly what you know. Mm. They've copied another Caterpillar mm -hmm. cake. Yeah, so Audi. Audi have got like a rubbish version of that. So this is the good one. And they're taking them to court. But that's because this is really good and Audi's probably rubbish in it. This one's better, isn't it? I think. All right. Thanks, Maisie. Funny stories. You see that Canadian MP had his cock out on Zoom? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's really good. Um, his name's William Amos, and he's uh, he was at like an MP, like House of Commons meeting yeah. on Zoom. And uh, yeah, he's got his knob out. Like, well, he's naked Why? completely on the thing. By accident, he didn't know his camera was on. <laughs> oh, so it was meant to just be a like... So, he's, he's a great photo. Obviously, I'll put it in. Um, he got like the Canadian flag and flag of like Quebec, I think is where he's from. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like a, like a nice sort of, not presidential, but sort of ish looking office. Yeah. And uh, he's just walking around with his like completely naked looking for something. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's it was because he'd just been out for his morning jog. So he's come back to then put his like work clothes on to then go on this call, obviously. Yeah. And he didn't realise he's like, Zoom was on. Oh, that's amazing. He was just walking around naked. That is amazing. <laughs> it's the worst part of, um, you know, things going back to normal and stuff with COVID is that you, we have to start wearing clothes for stuff again. Yeah, like jeans and stuff. Like, yeah. I wore my jeans for the first time in ages. During lockdown, all my, like, Zoom meetings and stuff, like, T-shirt or, like, shirt for a work thing and then just boxes on. <laughs> so, geez, yeah. It's just how it is. Yeah. It? Well, have I told the story on here before about the... Yeah, the um, driving course thing. I don't think I have, have I? No. It's this very light on brand. It's not on topic for this, big time. So, uh, hands up. I did a bit of speeding last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was doing 34 in a 30 on the way to work. I find that um, so hard to believe because Robbie is literally like... It's hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally <laughs> like going in the car with your grandma. What? You are, Rob. Really bad. But can there's nothing wrong with being someday? safe. There's nothing wrong with being safe, is there? No. And that's what I say to all the girls. And I'm putting <laughs> two on. <laughs> yeah, so I'm on, I had to go on a speed awareness course. We've all been there. Um, you've been on a speed awareness course. I have. You? I've so. got points, actually. I did the course and then got caught again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Um, so, yeah, I went on the speed awareness course. I was supposed to be going to Derby, the uh, Derby Conference Derby! Center. Derby! <laughs> Derby Conference Centre. Um, but then COVID kicked in, so I had to do it remotely and it was on teams right so it was on teams with this woman who was running it an american woman and um we just like chatting and stuff and she said oh it can't be any worse than what i've had this morning she, she like she really wanted to tell us a story straight away you know when people are just like desperate to tell mm -hmm. you about it and what happened was i was on the like 11 o'clock one or something and they do an early one at like eight o'clock in the morning and this guy had like logged on at like two minutes past eight so he obviously literally like was late already for the meeting because it's quite important you're on time and he was like in bed on the call and um they have to say to you like you make sure you need to be like sat up properly and stuff so they told him and anyway he's like, sort of sat up but you could they could tell that he was sort of in bed he did the first bit of the course and then about an hour in you get a uh it's like a 10 minute break just to go to the toilet get a drink or whatever and um he like stood up in his bed, so I like, put the laptop down and stood up like that. But that was the first time he got out of bed and he didn't have any pants on. So, and obviously on this call, you've got <laughs> like 20 people from around like the country doing mm. this thing. <laughs> so he's like, go for a drink then guys. All right, um, and they just literally stood up and he's got his full cock and balls on. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Another funny story then, um, Yahoo Answers is shutting down. Um, oh no which is a bit like ask Jeeves it's like one of the things you could just go on and all I've ever searched on Yahoo is Google yeah yeah you just type Google in, don't yeah. It? yeah I do yeah. Well. Um, but there was a great thread of like stupid things that people have asked on Yahoo answers mm -hmm. over the time and I'll get on with Eric asked in the topic of pregnancy and parenting in the pregnancy subcategory 
How is baby formed? <laughs> How is baby formed? How girl get pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> what you don't know is he's actually from Tamworth. So that's <laughs> How's baby born? <laughs> so anonymous asked um, in the science and mathematics category in the subsection of astronomy and space. Do you think humans will ever walk on the sun? I was just daydreaming and thinking today and I thought about how crazy it was that a person has walked on the moon and Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering Mars. if you think a person will ever walk on the sun too. Like, I know it's really hot, but I'm thinking if they went in the winter time when the sun is only like 30 degrees, I bet they could do it. <laughs> <laughs> on the sun is funny. Yeah. As well, it's not like a, an actual surface, is it? Mm. Can I tell by the smell of my husband's gas if he's been cheating? All right, so this is again by Anonymous in the family and relationships area under marriage and divorces <laughs> three years ago. Um, I know this sounds crazy, but Hubs usually has his own smell. The family always knows when he has passed gas, even if he tries to be funny and blame it on the dog. <laughs> Lately, he's had to work late a few times, and each time he's come home and his gas has smelled unlike anything I've ever smelled from him. Kind of like maybe he had Thai food or something. He says he has only been at work and not anywhere else, but something is definitely different. Do you think he's cheating? <laughs> <laughs> From his fault. <farm. laughs> Amazing. There's, there's some other good ones. What if the girl that thinks I'm the dad isn't the mum? <laughs> I just want to spare 30 seconds of this podcast to someone who passed away. Um, Mr. Paul Ritter, who played Martin in Friday Night Dinner. I love Friday Night Dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, he died at the age of 54, brain tumour. He was also in uh, Chernobyl as well, when that was a, a big thing. Um, and yeah, it really made me sad. I felt like someone in my family had died. I genuinely read it and was like, oh, yeah, shit on it. And also um, Helen McCrory, who plays uh, Polly in Peaky Blinders. She died as well, 52. So another big thing to happen in April, April the 12th happened in April. Um, and that's when things could start to open again. Pubs, bars for outdoor dining. Mm-hmm. Have you done anything yet? Have you been anywhere? Uh, I went to the club. <laughs> social club? <laughs> yeah, no, a social How club. How was it? Really good, yeah. It was nice to see, obviously, I uh, went with my uncle and granddad and my dad came with us as well. So it was nice to see the family, but also it was like The toilet busy. still smell. Yeah, of course. Yes! Well, um, my place is open again, and I've really enjoyed being back at work, and it is all just young people. On a, like bottomless brunch? Bottomless brunch. People getting pissed, or? Yeah. Really? Do you want to quickly show you the, I like to call it, the six stages of bottomless brunch? Yeah. Hold fire. Yeah, so our, our bottomless brunch is an hour and a half, mm-hmm. so it can be broken down into six 15-minute chunks, um, and I've seen it materialise for years now, mm-hmm. and um, it's literally like scripted every time so any girls that watch this you will 100% relate to this because I just no both of you both of you <laughs> yeah um, you'll have got a bit dressed up a little bit sexier um, you'll wear anything that's like Instagrammable um, you'll go off to the toilets in like two or threes never on your own and this is um, how it goes so if you want to say like 15 30 45 and I can show you each step yeah okay so let's go when they first enter. Zero minutes, yeah? Okay. Zero. Hi, you all right? Yeah, I've been excited about this of you. Yeah, yeah, it's been good, hasn't it? Right, shall we order some drinks? 15. Oh, thank you. Oh, here we go then. It's been long, hasn't it, girls? Cheers, cheers. Hang on. Boomerang, boomerang, hang on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 30. Shall we order some food then? We should probably order some food, shouldn't we? Uh, I forgot about the food. You do, don't you? Forget all about the food. <laughs> 45. <sighs> How many? Have I got, who's round is it? <coughs> who's round is it? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. An hour. <laughs> <Hang> on. <laughs> I need some water. I need some water now. Kelly, Kelly, please. Kelly, get me some water, please. Please. <laughs> Is that an hour, hour and 15? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me and Mark are going really well now, actually. We're getting a dog as well. It's been really lovely. Yeah, how long we got? 15? 
Uh, can we get two more rounds, please? Manager, manager, can we get two more rounds, please? Because of the time. Look at the time. <laughs> uh, an hour and a half. And I told him I'm, I'm hoping the doggle. I'm hoping the doggle bring us back together or something. <laughs> And then a mate's always going, you're better than this, darling. You were so much better than this. So the same <laughs> girls, the same girls who I've watched come in like, hey, yeah. always leave crying. Really? Every single time. Um, yeah, that's the six stages yeah. of the bottom of the That's you. brilliant. So it's time for this month's edition of Tommy's Trends. And we did a Netflix series last time. And this time, I don't feel like we've talked about food enough. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was well timed. <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, a fast food joint that is in Swad and Tamworth called the Balearic Eye. Um, really topical as well because they've just been shut down for COVID, haven't they? Have they really? Yeah. What, the Swad one mm. or both? Uh, pass. I think it's the Swad one. Right. Do you um, want to tell us a little bit about that quickly? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you everything about it because I saw one post on Facebook so I know everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they had like an outdoor area where you could go and eat, eat there and someone dubbed him into the council it turned out it wasn't open air enough and it didn't meet the COVID regulations so now oh, it's takeaway only do, right okay That's what, Tamworth hasn't got a dine in it's yeah. just a takeaway okay anyway back to it so I've been told very good things about Balearic Eye um, from my uncle Mitch Auntie Lindsay Uncle John Stacey you lot had it didn't you on it was dad's too big birth. for me <laughs> Sorry, I'm shitting all over your review. Yeah. yeah, you are. Yeah, I've been told very good things about Balearic, uh, Balearic Eye from um, a few of my relatives, uh, Robbie and them. Like, had it for Dad's fiftieth. You had a takeaway, didn't you? And that it's just different gravy. <laughs> Me and Louise have been eyeing it up. We took the plunge a few weeks ago. Now, the first thing you'll see when you look at the menu, it's quite expensive. So, like, a, the burger I had was about thirteen quid, and you don't get chips with that. It's just a burger. Chips were about a fiver. Um, so I was expecting big things and fuck me sideways. It was fantastic. <laughs> now, cheeseburger is, I don't care if anyone's going to judge me for this. Cheeseburger is my favorite food. Like if I was held at gunpoint, my favorite food is cheeseburger. I really like mm, them. You're so cool shit, aren't you? And I made this quote. <laughs> I made, I said this statement. It was the best cheeseburger I've ever had. Ever. In my 26 years of life. It overtook five guys. Five Guys is now second. Balearic High food, the chips, the burger, top quality, amazing, well worth the money. People who moan about it being too inexpen- like too expensive, just fuck off and get a Rustlers. Like, you pay what you get for. You pay what you get for. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like Colin earlier. If you want quality, you pay for it. Yeah. Um, stunning. I'm giving it a 9.1 out of 10. Did you not think it was quite big? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I don't you think for people who have like, if you eat normal portions. No, there's nothing, nothing worse. Listen, <laughs> these did it. Yeah, <laughs> he's reeling me. In. There's nothing worse than people saying two sentences. Oh, it's a bit pricey. Oh, it was a bit big. Fuck off! <laughs> it's pricey because it's big. Yeah. You know I mean, you can't say it's too expensive and then it was too much. Yeah, if it's too expensive. And you ate it really quick and it was tiny and you wanted more, then that's bad value. Yeah, but I'd rather pay a normal price for a normal size thing. Because that doesn't mean it's bad value. Yeah. No, it's good value if you're talking about pound for pound of dish, but it's not a particularly enjoyable thing to eat when it's like a big size of your leg. I had the, what was it? Uh, steak and cheese Philly sauce. Yeah. And honestly, it was like, I could only eat half of it and I was done. Yeah, but- that's, I'm, what I'm saying is you need to be hungry or have, or be a big eater to definitely finish it off. Would you agree? That's, that's a massive, massive review there and really insightful. If you want to eat takeaway, <laughs> you've got to be hungry. <laughs> right, it's time for everyone's favourite feature. It's take a fake. Yay. So Thomas Tasters was everyone's favourite feature. Cole Wilden. I've reeled you in again. <laughs> um, so just a reminder of what this is. So um, take a break magazine. I go and buy one every month. And um, I choose two stories from the Take a Break magazine. You're right, I'm keeping you. Yeah, go on. I keep two stories from the Take a Break magazine, um, and then I make one up myself um, that fits the bill. I tell all three of them to Tommy. He, he can ask me some questions about them, and then uh, he has to guess which one's the fake. So play along at home. 
Um, and here we go. Okay, so um, I made my daughter's friend my toy boy. Mm-hmm. Cheat in the delivery suite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or two lives, two wives. Okay, go on then. Let's start with the first one. Okay, which one was that? Oh, I made my daughter's friend my toy boy. Mm-hmm. You got a woman in that, and she was an art teacher. Um, and this kid came in, and he said something like, he wanted to do ceramics or something. Anyway, she was married. She had two kids. And then um, when her daughter was 18, her daughter introduced her to one of his uh, mates, and it turned out it was this lad. And even though the, <coughs> the, even though the teacher... Was had been married, and she was forty eight at that point. And he was eighteen. Um, she ended up getting with him. And her daughter was feeling that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. What was What's it? Up in the, oh, the, the cheat in the delivery suite. Delivery suite. Delivery suite. Delivery suite. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a couple in that, and they've been together for like thirteen years. Um, she was on his phone and. It came up on Facebook. It was a photo of a woman with her tits out. Mm. Um, turned out that he had it away. Um, they tried to have a baby because they thought that would make it feel better. And uh, But then she found out that he'd been cheating on her like four days before she gave birth and that. Oh, delivery suite as in baby. What do you think it was? What do you think it meant? Um, delivery suite. I don't know what I thought <laughs> it meant. I didn't think it meant baby though. Yeah. Um, okay, and last one. Next one. Uh, two lives, two wives. Mm-hmm. So again, you've got a couple in that. Um, they've been married for 20 years. They've got one daughter. Anyway, daughter goes on uh, Instagram, I think it was. Put a photo on of the family. One of her followers messaged her and said, oh, that bloke looks like my mate's dad, sort of thing. Oh, no. Um Long story short, he had like another family in that. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> um, so I think the rubbish one is number one. The, a, the uh, daughter's, daughter's friend, friend. Toy, toy boy. Yeah. Okay. What do you think at home, guys? Um, was it, I made my daughter's friend my toy boy? Was it, cheat in the delivery suite? Or was it two lives, two wives? Tommy's gone for one. I can tell you, the fake one was two lives, two wives. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's got it wrong no. again. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to get one right. She was a teacher, right? He's come in, said like art and that. And then she's married with two kids, but her marriage is like in the toilet. Anyway, the daughter gets to 18 and she says, oh, like this is one of my mates. His name's Joe. And she didn't recognise him, obviously, because now he's six foot and he's got a beard. And um, she was like, oh, he went to your school. Then they started talking and he's really into art still at that point. And she's like, oh, I do remember you. You came into my class once and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, um, she like fell in love with him when he was 18. She's 48. And uh, they ended up like having it away behind her daughter's back. Mm. Eventually told her and um, her entire family have disowned her. That she's 71 now and he's 40. Um... And they owned an art business together and they got married and none of their family went. Watch out, guys. Good lucker, isn't she? <laughs> did you do that? Yeah. That was a classic. Turn that round. I always used to do that as a kid. Does anyone, <laughs> does anyone else used to do this to the mum's magazines? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, she says... Let me just find the... I should have underlined it. Um, yeah, there was a nice bit, right? I thought it was quite nice, this, right? Because it, it was a good example of how there's someone for everyone, isn't there? And the heart wants what it wants. Yeah. Yeah. I'm keeping you. No. Um, <clears throat> so she got with him. They were together for a bit. She told her daughter, and her daughter was like, "You're nearly fifty. It's disgusting. Right, right. You're having it. Yeah, you know, having a go at her." So then, she even accused me of performing witchcraft on Joe. <laughs> Um, so she didn't go out with him because of her daughter right and they separated for six years right 
So then she said, I've never felt so lonely in all my life. Then one Christmas day, I was in bed and my phone rang. It was 1.30 a.m. And I thought, there's only one person who would call me at this time. Santa. <laughs> yeah. I leapt out of bed, snatched up, snatched up my phone, and a familiar voice said, Merry Christmas, Susan. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> this is like a John Lewis advert, isn't it? Yeah. I burst into tears. As he emptied his sack on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This tall, bearded man came into my room and emptied his sack at the end of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I cried. I can't believe it's you. I've missed you so much. It had been six years since we'd split up, but the feelings hadn't gone. I love you, Joe said. I still love you too, I replied. And then Aww. they got together, and they've been together for, yeah, for years now. Lovely. Um, Final feature of the podcast. Um, if you remember from the last monthly review, we asked you who was in the mud out of um, Jess Glynn, Piers Morgan, and David Dobrik. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for the comments, and the winner was David Dobrik. So mm -hmm. we're going to put him in the mud. Here's the mud! No, it is. Um, we've got some mud. Um, and there's little David Dobrik going in. Like that. So now it's time for you to decide who's going to join David in the mud. Okay, so the first one, James Charles. James Charles in the mud! Um, do you want to explain who he is? He's a American, or is he Canadian? Don't know. One of them YouTuber who does like makeup, um, cosmetics. He's very flamboyant. He's very hey guys, um, and he has been done for um, basically messaging young fans, fans that he probably shouldn't be yeah. talking he to. Yeah, admitted to sexting two sixteen-year-old lads. We've all been there. And asking for their nudes. <laughs> um, he's been demonetized by YouTube. and uh, Completely. Some of his sponsors Ooh. have um, backed out on him as well. Second option for the mud for April is David Cameron. David Cameron in the mud. He's yeah. facing an inquiry um, about... So it's Greensill Capital is the company that um, he was like lobbying for. And essentially he was trying to get contracts and stuff for this firm by like texting Mishi Sunak or going out for dinner with Matt Hancock or whatever. And he sort of didn't really play by the rules and he's been getting done for it. And they're sort of hanging him out to dry and taking him to a proper inquiry for it, which is good to see, obviously. Um, but I do think that, isn't that how it works in a way? I mean, that that's what I think about the government and stuff. Yeah. All of them are shady and all of that's how the entire government's yeah. worked probably forever. So David Cameron's probably thinking, if this is all shocking you, you really like, exactly, yeah. I can't handle the real um, what's going on. Yeah, but anyway, he's an option. Ben Askren is the ben third Askren option. Ben Askren in the mood. Um, so again, for those of you who don't know, he had a fight, a boxing fight with a YouTuber called Jake Paul, who's sort of stepping into the, the boxing game. Mm -hmm. Um, Ben Askren went to the Olympics for wrestling for the America. Um, and he's also held the welterweight world championship in one MMA and Bellator MMA. Um, and he got slapped up in one round by a YouTuber. Mm. Um, and I have to say, I'm not one for like body shaming people. You look like what you look like. But I don't think I've ever really thought when I've seen the guy on the scales... I look better than that person, definitely. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I look better in a pair of shorts than he does. What he looked like was, it was the first day that the swim pools had been back open and everybody was having to have their photo taken for an ID card. And it, that's exactly what he looked mm. like on the photo. Yeah, he, he looked horrendous, didn't he? I'm going to put it out there. I'll, I'll prepare for the heat. Um, I quite like Jake Paul. Yeah. What's wrong with him? No, uh, I don't like him as a person. I think, like... No, but kind of... Do you not think that that's... I respect the grind 100%. That's what I'm saying. I, I think he completely knows what he's doing. And like he's, that's not really what he's like. Yeah, I respect what he's doing. And I, I mean, obviously the boxing stuff, I'm not a massive fan of because I'm a fan of boxing. And like... What when would he, it when, take for him to gain your respect? Be a professional boxer. Yeah, I think that's got to be the next step, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, he should do Tommy Fury because it will do good figures. Yeah, get hammered. It would, yeah, I know, but that. no, but it would do good figures. And oh, yeah, it'd be amazing. It's either make or break, isn't it? Either he jacks it in or like, imagine if he beat Tommy Fury. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Ben Askren is, he literally just cashed out, basically. Mm. He's like, he's cashed out his career. And that is, his, that's his legacy now. You know, you go to the Olympics, you win these things, but your legacy is you got like slapped up and Snoop Dogg was commentating. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he got 500 grand plus um, pay-per-view percentage points as well. So 
probably nearer a million quid yeah. dollars sorry and his wife was just hugging him and smiling yeah as they it's walked a cash off. out and this is conspiracy would he have or members of his family potentially put some money on him losing in the first round at nine or ten to one odds yes mm. <laughs> probably um that seems to be how it works really um so I, I don't think he was in a rush to get up is what is all i would no. say um but yeah, fair play to Jake Paul. But you know, is that what you want your reputation to be? You know, ending your career, getting slapped up by him, who is just a coked up YouTuber, isn't he? Thanks for watching, guys. Um, that was another monthly review. We promise we will have another video out before the next monthly review. Um, we will get around the copyright issue. Um, we're still edging towards that 500 subs, and we really want to get there because we've got loads of cool prizes to give. Um, so please just. Grab your friend, grab your partner, grab whoever, um, and get them to bloody subscribe. So Give us a sub. Yeah, like you said the other week, we've got a big £1,000 check behind here that's getting yeah. in the way. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I've been Tommy. I've been Robbie. He's been Colin. You've been awesome. Cheers.